Let's bring in Glenn Ordway, great radio host, WEEI in Boston, has his uh, regular weekly visit with Bill Belichick, and he joins us now. Glenn, thanks for joining us. Uh, what do you make of this? Well, here's what I make of it, uh, Dan. One, Bill Belichick was adamant yesterday, and you, as you know, that's not necessarily his style. Sometimes he'll downplay stuff, low-key it, because he doesn't want to talk about it. He wanted to talk about it. Uh, there was no question. The other thing I can tell you from sources within the Patriots organization is they know they screwed up internally, but it was not the football operations department. So as you know, these football teams now, they become marketing giants and they've got their own content departments, production departments. And so it was something outside of the football operation. But I've talked to somebody who has actually uh, knowledge of what is on that SD card. And the way it was described to me, it is longer than eight minutes on the sideline. I don't know the exact uh, time limit on it. But what they did is they sat down with the scout before the game. They asked him exactly what he does. They're doing a whole series of these. They did one on their trainer, Jim Whalen, earlier in the year, and they're doing it for their production company. So they sit down with the scout. And they say, what are you looking for? Well, I'm looking for personnel changes and when they're going to change personnel. So they got a bunch of information from him as to what his job is, and then they set a fixed camera on a tripod, set it up, and tried to go and get B-roll for each one of those things that he claimed he watches for. So I'm sure the league is going to see that tape, and they're going to see a lot of the sideline because that's what a scout does. The question is, was it done for football purposes, or was it done for production, TV production, for the team's you know, digital uh, wing of the organization. The NFL is going to have to determine that. But can you plead ignorance? Can that be your defense here? And then the commissioner might show some leniency? I don't think it's it, ignorance. Matter of fact, I'm hearing just the opposite from people within the Patriots organization. Now, the football operation is denying everything, as Belichick did yesterday on my show. They're denying it 100%. They knew nothing about it. I'm hearing from other people that, the yes, they went out of their way to set up their crew in Cincinnati, uh, in this for this game in Cleveland, they worked with Cleveland to do it. They're pleading that they should have had much closer wraps on it. They shouldn't have allowed it to just happen. They should have gone through what is the protocol? Are we going to get ourselves into trouble? And let's face it, Dan, there's a reputation with the organization. They need to be able to think <laughs> about that, right? Are you sure? Reputation. Are you sure? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> but you you know Bill Belichick pretty well. Um, the fact that he showed this, I, I don't know if that's anger, like how upset he was. Like how much do you read into that knowing what his personality is? A lot. I, I was thoroughly convinced, and it was the first question I was going to ask him when he walked into the studio. Um I can tell a lot of times from him now knowing him for, you know, over 20 years dealing with him, you know, if he wants to talk about something or not, I was thoroughly convinced that Bill knows nothing about it. Now, I also was convinced that Bill knows this is not a good thing for the organization. He knows the way it's going to be perceived nationally, the way it's going to be played up. I mean, first of all, if you if you're going to self-scout and you're going to cheat, would you do it against the Cincinnati Bengals? Why wouldn't you do it against Kansas City here last week or Baltimore a few weeks ago, Dan? Second of all, if you're going to do it, why would you do it with somebody that's wearing Patriot paraphernalia? And one of the cameramen apparently was wearing Boston Bruins paraphernalia. You sneak somebody in the stands, you get a fixed camera, you got 4K stuff in your iPhones now, and you can grab all the information you need. It makes no sense. Maybe they just got caught this time around, Glenn. Well, you know, it's, you know, it's possible. <laughs> it's possible. Anything is possible. I just think that this is one of those that's going to look really bad. So if you think that the Patriots have been cheaters in the past, this just gives you more ammunition. And obviously, to me, it doesn't seem like they did anything wrong. Is it possible? I will say this. If the NFL sits down, watches that video on the SD card, and sees three hours of a fixed camera on the sideline, then they're probably going to throw a heavy fine or draft picks or something with the New England Patriots. If the, if the NFL can't tell the difference 
between footage that is used to apply to the to the game versus the B-roll that is used for a television production, then something's wrong. I got to believe they're going to be able to figure it out. Could this be a good thing for the Patriots? Uh, no. Have you watched this uh, season? <laughs> I, but but uh, now I'm hearing that, oh, this is going to rally the Patriots. Usually when they're cheating, they're winning uh, Super Bowls here. Uh, yeah. I, I tell you what, if you can find a new tight end anywhere close to Rob Gronkowski's <laughs> talent, if you can find like a couple of receivers, maybe Antonio Brown, bring him back, then maybe you could fix this thing. I mean, offensively, they are really challenged. Special teams and defense is great. It reminds me of the uh, Fritzy's 2015 Denver Broncos, you know, where they had the great defense. Their offense sucked. Peyton Manning was uh, really at the end. Actually, Tom Brady right now is, I, I put, think, playing a lot better than Peyton played that year. Yeah. And yet Denver won it. What do you make of uh, what Tom Curran reported about Brady that it kind of laying the uh, breadcrumbs down that you could see a mutual parting here? Belichick makes that decision to say, you know what, we're moving on to another quarterback here next season. Yeah, I, I think anything is possible with Bill Belichick because he is not going anywhere. Uh, I would not be surprised to see Bill coach for another five years. He's got his sons in the operation right now. I think it's like the Shanahan family and others before him that, you know, they're, they're, they're going to continue the coaching legacy. So I don't think he's going anywhere. As you know, Tom is excellent. Tom Curran is excellent at this stuff. He's got real tight tie-ins with the Brady family. But I think it all comes down to the Patriots. I think if the Patriots want Tom Brady back, Tom Brady is back. If the Patriots don't, I don't think Tom Brady is done playing football I really don't, Dan. I think he wants to play for till he's 45. I think he still believes he can do it. He's having fun. Even with all these young people around him, he seems to be energized by it. I think he'll play for somebody else if the Patriots won't have him. But I find it hard to believe that the Patriots are going to move on without Tom Brady because I don't see a quarterback anywhere. The Stidham kid can't do it. They traded Garoppolo away. Where's their quarterback? Eli Manning. <laughs> uh, he's like Manning. Uh, hey, how did you get Belichick to agree to do a weekly radio show? Uh, well, you know, I learned from you. You know, you're persuasive. You know, you work the <laughs> angles, and you get these people to do whatever they want, right? You do it all the time. Oh yeah, right? yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I, 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 I've been asked before if I've ever met Bill Belichick, and I always tell him there's only – I was only around him one time. We've never had him on, but uh, I think it was the night of the butt fumble, and he walked out onto the field, and I was with Rodney Harrison and Tony Dungy. And so he shakes their hands, and I'm the next guy in line, but I don't put my hand out too far so it's not too embarrassing if he doesn't shake my hand, and he just yeah. blows right by me, and I – pull my hand back hoping that nobody saw any of that so really yeah yeah but that's wow. okay yeah i don't well, think you you, you you were hurt by that you were hurt by that i mean come on you, oh no you, no you've been with you've been with kings dan come on oh you've i know i wasn't hurt culture. but even when i'm handing him a super bowl trophy it, it's not like you know there's any small talk there but you know i tell coach i said hello that's i guess that's what i'm getting I will. At. yeah just uh, will. Trust, <laughs> start trust your interview you next are. week just say hey coach uh, dan patrick said hello uh, I will bring it up to you, Dan. <laughs> uh, who's that? Uh, yeah, Dan Patrick. He's been around a long time. Um, hey, who? Who? Yeah, exactly. Bill Patrick? Yeah. Who, who's that? Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's great to talk to you, Glenn. Thank Good you for joining you. us, buddy. That's uh, Glenn Ordway. He's one of the king, radio kings there in Boston, W-E-E-I. Two to six in the afternoon. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune in to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV, stream for free on BR Live, or download the Dan Patrick Show app.